Tell this to our Father in heaven, we are grateful to be in your presence tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your servant. Father, I stand before your people, knowing that I can't do nothing on my own. Help me, Holy Spirit, to deliver your word. Bless your people as only you can and take out the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Every heart said amen. 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 And amen. amen. We're going to come from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read a few verses therein. We're going to start at verse 7. Uh, we're going to do it in King James Version, Brother Leganzi. For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10. I'm going to read it and I'm going to try to unpack it the best I know how. He says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But is a change of direction. For to one is given the Spirit of word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Let us rest there and talk about operating in the spirit part two. You may be seated in the presence of God. Last week we talked about the gifts of the Spirit. On Wednesday we talked about we talked about administration. We talked about manifestation. We talked about Romans 12, 6 through 8. Seven gifts that are in the church. So every one of you has a gift that you are in control of. And I showed you an example when you're in the playground. Probably the shortest guy is who's telling everybody what to do. And we just follow him. Because he's gifted in leadership. And that gift is from the Holy Spirit. Now, now in the church, according to Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, if you look in our brochures in there, he said, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and leaders. Those are in the church. The seven spirits that you were given was outside the church. The prophets, the evangelists, are in the church. Now, follow me. In 1 Corinthians 12, these are the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, because your gift was given to you, whether you were in the church or out of the church, a leader is a, dealer, a, de a, a leader no matter where you find them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a leader could be a crook. Because that's his natural gift. He will lead, but he's crooked. <laughs> The encourager can encourage you, but he also lies. That's his natural gift. But he's got something on him that the devil put there. So he's in command of his gift all the time. What he does with the gift is up to him. But what I'm talking to you about today is the manifestations of the spirit. Now, if I'm a leader... How am I leading? Remember I told you the teacher explains the truth? You all remember that? Was that the only one here? 
Amen. So it has to do, all the seven gifts have to do with the truth. What is the truth? The word of God. So if I'm a teacher, I'm explaining the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm a teacher, and I explain the truth to the glory of God with the gift he gave me, until I do it to the end of my ability, there is no manifestation, manifestation of the spirit. People don't understand what speaking in tongues is because nobody explains it. There's a prayer language called speaking in tongues that's in your closet. You don't even know what you're saying. The Bible says the spirit takes it and explains it to God in the language God will understand. But that's in your closet. Paul said, when you speak in tongues privately, you edify yourself. You read 12, Corinthians 12. But the speaking in tongues in this one is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let me bring it down to earth. Word of wisdom. The first manifestation of the Spirit. In Isaiah 11, it says there were seven spirits upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of wisdom, discernment, might, on and on. Here it says the manifestation of the spirit. Manifestation means the things that happen when I'm available. Hmm. But I have to be in my gift serving God for this to happen. Everyone wants to speak for God. Everyone wants to lay hands on people and pray and they get well. But as much as you practice it, not everyone you lay his hands on gets healed. Hmm. So here we go. Here's the explanation. Your natural gifts are yours to control and do whatever you want with. But if you choose to serve God with it, the manifestations will come. Let me show you. Wisdom. That was on Jesus. In Mark 12, verse 17, it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. It was a trick question. Who should we pay tribute to? He said, What do you have in your hand? It was a coin. Say, so whose picture is in it? They say Caesar. Well, then give God what's his and give Caesar what is his. Divine wisdom. It was not rehearsed. Listen to me. In Luke 21, 15, the Bible says, For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that the enemy shall not be able to resist nor gainsay. So it is a download from heaven at the time of your confrontation. So you can turn it on and off the way you want to. But you have to be at the end of your own personal ministry. Number two. The word of knowledge. When you go home, please read this thing. It will help you. You all have a gift. But if you don't shuffle your gift, none of this is going to happen with you. It might be a price in the pan and never happen again if you live to be a hundred. But if you operate in your gift, a lot of things God can use you for. Did you know that the seven gifts I explained to you, people don't have one? I have five operating in my life. But I have a, I have a, I have a dominant gift, teaching. <laughs> so if I don't teach to the best of my ability, God cannot use me. The Holy Spirit can manifest itself through me. Can I tell you something else? If I ever charge for the teaching, I rule my own gift. Hmm. <laughs> so, word of knowledge. In Matthew 17, I'm going to hurry up. It's hard in here. Matthew 17, verse 27 says this. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook 
Now, now, this is word of knowledge. Hear me now. This is not common knowledge. The sea is a big vast of body of water. When you fish in it, you use net. Y'all don't hear me. To use a hook, you use a hook in a stream. <laughs> you might use a hook in a river, not in the sea. <laughs> Jesus said, go to the sea and take hook, not net. To a professional fisherman, here's Peter again. He's a professional fisherman. He doesn't go fishing in the sea with a hook. He goes with a net. He says, take the hook. Go to the sea and put it in there. The first fish that comes out, take it out, open his mouth, there is money in it. How did he know this? Except the Holy Spirit downloaded at the time. Number three, 1 Corinthians 12, in 9, it talks about faith. In Matthew 8, 26 and 27, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? So where is the measure of faith? Where is the measure of faith? It is in what I do from what I believe from God the first time. This faith that we're talking about, I need you to follow me closely. Until I'm at the end of operating my gift, the Holy Spirit has a right not to manifest anything through me. The faith we are talking about is not the faith in Hebrews 11. The faith we are talking about is a special faith that allows me to do something one time. Might not happen again. I can't do this thing in my regular faith from Hebrews 11. But this one is a faith that the Spirit puts in my heart and I do this thing that I have heard from the Lord and it takes place just like I believed it. Might never get there again. So he says, hmm. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. You can't hear me? Okay. I'm getting signals. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. Look at this. But the man marveled. That means Jesus, at this point, the manifestation of the Spirit came through him. Remember, he has walked on water and done all this stuff. But they have never seen him in a boat where they are about to capsize. And they woke him up from sleep. And he spoke to the wind. And everything died down. Faith. Supernatural faith. Faith above the one you could muster per time. None of us in crisis can muster our faith. Yeah, very few. I know what I'm talking about. When you're under attack, prayer is the most difficult thing you can do, unless you're trained in it. And even while you're praying, you're thinking, maybe this is, I might die from this. I know I'm not guessing. But you keep praying, and God pulls you through. But this one, water is in the boat. They're about to sink. He gets up, it's disaster. He sleep. He wakes up, calmly says, peace be still. Where did he get that from? He should have feathered it in before the water got in the boat. Oh, don't hear me. Number four, gift of healing. Now hear me. This manifestation of the Holy Spirit is still in the church today. But because we don't walk close to our gift, we don't see anything. It sounds like... Anybody here know who Benny Hinn is? He has a healing ministry. Have you ever asked yourself, why doesn't he go to the hospital and lay hands on the sick people? 
and they'll get up and go home because it's not his. Mm. God only uses yielded vessels in their gift. Mm. If you are too big to use your gift for him, you will keep struggling. Even in the gift, you're supposed to be the specialist. Y'all don't hear me. There are people who have sang in this world. They started in the church, but they got too big for God. They went out there to make money. They never came home. Let me move on. In Matthew 4, verse 24, this is about healing. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils <laughs> and those which were lunatic and those who had the palsy and he healed them. So whatever Jesus has modeled for us in this life, he left the spirit in the church. Do we know how to operate these gifts? You have to start from the one that is naturally yours. If I don't teach to the best of my ability, I can't lay hands on you and anything happen. If I don't teach, I just come in here and pretend and I quote some scriptures, I go home. This church will die. We will not grow. We won't have any visitors. Okay. Trying to help you. Trying to help you. The Bible says that these gifts are needed. Miracles are needed. Healing is needed. But the Holy Spirit is willing and ready and able to use us, but we're not available. We are not available because we are doing our own thing. God will not come down to listen to how you want to do things. Mm -mm. Because he's God all by himself. You will come and go. The next one will come and go. He's still God. Malachi 3, he says, I am the Lord God. I change not. So the thing you want out of his hand, he has rules. He has protocols to get it out of his hand. Let me move on. The working of miracles. Hmm. That's number five. See, we lack the effect that I quote scriptures to someone who's dying and they wake right up. Mm -hmm. I got your attention. But how do I get there? Mm -hmm. Do you know it's available to you? The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. You read it sometime. He said, in a great house, there are many vessels. Earthen vessels, wooden vessels, gold, silver. But whichever purifies itself is ready for the master's use. So the Holy Spirit manifestation is dependent on how dedicated you are to the natural gift he gave you. He says, there rose a great tempest and Jesus spoke. The storm died. How? Manifestation of the Spirit. Manifestation of the Spirit. The gift of prophecy. Number six. Gift of prophecy. Do you know how? Maybe you don't. You don't. One of my gifts is in prophecy. It's not speaking about the future. It's about illumination about scriptures that you're reading. You're not going to get this. Sometimes I'm speaking to you and the Holy Spirit will say something as while I'm talking. When I tell you you don't hear me, it's not you I'm talking about, I'm talking about me. Because when you hear it, it's the first time I'm hearing it too. Eh, that's above your face, kid. 
It's called illumination in this case. I don't have the capacity to do that. Except I'm yielded and ready to receive. Then it will come through me, period. Sometimes if you ask me what I said yesterday, I couldn't tell you because I'm not responsible for it. Y'all don't hear me. When you are yielded, the Holy Spirit will use you for whatever he needs done at that time. But if you are not yielded, if you are doing your thing, he will leave you alone because he gave you free will. In Luke chapter 4, he said, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Watch, watch this. And his custom was, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. On the Sabbath day and stood up for, to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He was speaking about himself. Illumination. They had read the scriptures in Isaiah. They didn't know what it was. But while he was reading, the Spirit spoke through him. The Spirit is telling you, I am the one that was sent to preach to you. Illumination. Prophecy. God can still do it through us. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have an office in the church. You just need to be submitted to him. And he'll do whatever he needs done through you. Spoons. Everybody knows what a spoon is. Even the kids know what a spoon is. There's a spoon, there's a fork, there's a knife. Sometimes when you want to do something with the spoon and the spoon is not available, you're trying to do it with the fork. Does it work all the time? Mm -hmm. What about the knife? Trying to cut a piece of meat and I take a spoon. Will I cut it? But there are all utensils on my table. And I, oh no, I don't hear me. They are all mine, but I use the right tool for the right problem. God will use the person who is right and ready to be used. Let me move on. Number seven, discernment of spirit. You know how you meet some people? Hmm, we'll mess with you today. You know how you meet some people? Some about them you don't like. You don't know what it is. It's not their dressing. Their hair is combed. They wear a nice suit. But some about they haven't even opened their mouth. Some about them you don't like. Y'all don't hear me this way. It's called discernment of spirit. And when they do that thing that they haven't done in three months, aha. I told you something was wrong with him. <laughs> this is a man of spirit. Look at what the scripture says. In the same Luke 4, 33 and through 35. It says, and in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean spirit. Unclean devil. Cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? They said, the, 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 the devil says, I know thee. Sometimes we want a friend so bad. We get the vibes. They're the wrong friend. But the thing in their hand is attractive to me. So I'm doing my best to be their friend, even though I'm getting the signal. He's not a good person. They say men of spirit. Number eight, finally. Various kinds of tongues. There are denominations that are preaching. Tongues are dead. They will come back when Jesus comes. I'm here to tell you. If tongues were dead, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Hmm. If the Old Testament was irrelevant, it wouldn't be in the Bible. 
Now, I've explained to you there's two kinds of tongue. So listen to me carefully with scriptures. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, that if the Holy Spirit doesn't use you to speak in tongue, you speak privately. Don't create confusion. That's my own prayer language. I could mumble it up under my breath. Now listen to me. In Acts, it says that the people that the Holy Spirit came upon, the disciples, had cloves of, of fire on top of them and they spoke in diverse tongues. Hear me now. And people in their vicinity heard them in their own language. Follow me, follow me. Tongues by the Holy Spirit means you are giving utterance of a language you don't know. But it's supposed to be for somebody who understands that language. It's not for you. <laughs> it works the same as prophecy. So I speak... If I'm praying, I speak Igbo. If I speak Igbo, that's my native language. But somebody in the audience or myself needs to interpret what I just said so there's no confusion. The interpretation of tongues, number nine. I'm going to give you the scriptures. So various types of tongues is Acts 2.4. And they were all filled with the word Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Did you hear that? So the tongues that I'm speaking publicly, the Holy Spirit brought it. Somebody must be in the audience to interpret. Because God is a God of order, he does not bring confusion. But because we don't know how to partake of what the Spirit is doing, we are scared of it. Jesus. The interpretation of tongues. Trying to help someone here. First Corinthians 14, 26 and 27. The Bible says, How is it then, brethren? When ye come together, every one of you had a, a charm, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation. Had an interpretation. Let all things be done <laughs> unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two. Or at the most by three. And let one interpret. If I pretend to speak in tongues and nobody interprets it and I don't, it came from me. You all got that? So if someone is praying publicly and nobody is interpreting, they are out of order. That means there's more confusion in the body of Christ than there is. Paul said, don't speak in tongues without an interpreter. You will scare an unbeliever, they might never come back. I'm paraphrasing. So, <laughs> what do I need? Just a few more seconds. What do I need to operate in this in the spirit? Number one, you have to love God who gave you the gift. Deuteronomy 6 5. The Bible says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God and with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy might. Matthew 22, 37 and 38 says the same thing. But he, Jesus added this: love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. We read in the responsive reading this morning, that we are all one body, right? Different parts. But because I teach, you are not gifted to teaching. Don't try to teach. If yours is ministering, go minister. 
And if I had any sense, I would let you minister. I would stay teaching. Then you will function fully in your ministry, and I'll function fully in my ministry. Get this, someone. Get this. If I'm fully functioning as the arm, and you're fully functioning as the foot, we could get somewhere and we could pick up something to put in the mouth to eat. But if you are the hand and I'm the feet, and you want to be the feet, now two of us are feet, how are we going to eat? <laughs> Number two, you must be yielded in your natural gift. Yielding means if anybody asks me to come teach, I will gladly oblige them and I will not charge them. They are not going to give me enough money as the one who gave me the gift will pay me. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.21 I already talked to you. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set aside, and meet for the master's use. <laughs> Look at this. And prepared unto every good work. See, if I set my, side, my gift aside to glorify the God that gave me the gift, he won't let me go without. Amen. I went to Nigeria in December. We know how much money we have in the ministry. I needed a minimum of $2,000 to survive a week. All I had was $900. But before I left here, God spoke to someone in Erica and said, God told me to give you $200. Don't be jealous. They didn't mail it, they wired it to me. On getting to Nigeria, I spent two nights in a hotel that I paid for. Somebody else took me and put me in a better hotel and paid for a week. Somebody else picked me up from the hotel and took me to my house. That should have taken a 12-hour journey. A mm, couple of hundred dollars. They drove me to my door for free. I'm not listening. When I got home, Four different people came to me in the village and gave me money, said, God said to give you this, God said to give you this, God said to give you this. God. The fifth one, I said, no, that's enough. You don't hear me. If you operate your gift, there is nothing you need from God. He won't give you, even if he has to take it from the devil. Hmm. Number three, finally. Be obedient at all times with your gift. If you are a singer, they tell you to come and sing, don't think twice. If there is room in your, in your schedule, go. If there is two people to sing to, sing like it's the whole world, because the whole world will hear it. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> if you do it unto the Lord, like you're doing it for him, there's no telling where he will take you. Look at this. So, in Romans 6, 16, he said, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. Is it your flesh? Is it your wife or your husband? Is it your friend? Who are you listening to? This gift that God gave you, who commands it? When they say we have a crusade, we need you to sing. When you ask how many people are there, maybe 10. Well, I'm not coming. <laughs> or how much does he pay? Jesus said this. <laughs> when you give and you expect, you got your reward. Don't expect another. Can I tell you this? When you operate your gift to the level of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> there is nothing under the sun that God will, will move out of the way. 
for you to do that thing you do for him. But if you're doing it for, for yourself, it will back up. When you get done, I'll come back. Let me finish this. Your obedience, <laughs> he says, you are servants to whom you obey. Every servant gets paid. Oh, Lord. There is no servant that goes without pay. It is either something they incurred before they became servants, or it's something they did and they're serving to pay their debt. The third one is they're serving so they can get paid. <laughs> so if you serve God with the gift he gave you, he has every intention of paying you for it. My God is not a cheater. He's not a liar. He won't beat you out of nothing. Let me say this to you as we close. He says, the fourth one, he said, covet spiritual manifestation. Covet it. You know how somebody has a nice car? You want that car? God said covetousness is sin, right? But he's telling you this time, covet the spiritual gifts. As I close, let me share this with you. Elijah was a wild man. He was a prophet of God. God did a lot of mani uh, manifest manifestations through Elijah. Do did a lot of miracles, healing some people. Elisha was rich, was a farmer. Family was affluent. But he told Elijah, I need a double portion of what you carry. Hear me, hear me. Elijah had his own natural gifts. But he needed the manifestations of the of, of Holy Spirit to realize Elijah. He said, I need a double portion of it. So he followed Elijah until Elijah got taken up to heaven. But before Elijah left, he asked Elijah, what is it you want from me? Elijah said, a double portion of the Spirit upon you. He said, you ask a hard thing. Do you know why it was a hard thing? He couldn't give it. <laughs> that was up to God to do whatever he wanted with the manifestation of the spirit he said but if you see me if you will appreciate who I am and whose I am and who does this thing through me you have what you ask for so when the chariot of fire came and lifted Elijah his mantle fell Elijah picked it up now it was time to go back to where he came from he went to River Jordan. He said, where is the God of Elijah? He smote the water. Just like his master did. The sea parted. Rise to your feet. The sea parted because the power that was on Elijah was now on Elisha. So covet spiritual gifts. The miracles, the speaking in tongues, ask God for it. Ask him to use you for it. There's nine of them. Ask him. He's still available. The door of the church is open. For the acceptance of members. By letter. Or you're a candidate for baptism. Amen. Amen. We've been expecting you. No, I'm just kidding. God bless you. Is there any other? Do you have an expression, ma'am? I would just like to say that of all the churches that I have been in, I've lived in Arkansas and Illinois, I have never been into a church that teaches like this church. God bless you. I, I just got tired of all the hoopla, the pomp and circumstances and all that stuff. Mm. I'm at a point in my life where I'm ready to serve. Amen. God has blessed me in ways that you would not imagine. And it's selfish of me not to be at this point in my life and not be able to give back to serve. So please, whatever you do, don't stop teaching. God bless you. Because you are truly a blessing to this congregation. And you 
should have never given me this microphone. Okay. I got time. I'm truly, tired now. <laughs> and truly, this ministry is a blessing to Jonesboro. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Alison, give our, our visitor's card. In the back, it says, what's your spiritual gift? Would you write that down for me? And put your number down so I can call you. God bless you. Would you give God a hand clap, please? He's, he's adding to his. Hmm? Miss Willie? Yes. Bless you, man. God bless you. You may have your seat. Yes. Yes. Amen. He needs to be baptized. Come here, Freddie. Somebody has a bag. Let me whoop him first. Freddie, you want to be baptized? Hmm? How old are you? What? How old are you? What? Four. We might need a little time. Hmm? You going with five next one? Okay. All right. Let him turn five and we'll do it, okay? We need him with a little bit of understanding what we're doing to him. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise, everyone. Amen. We see there's none. No, there was one. But we still got room at the cross. For Israel be lost, Jacob shall not lose his reward. Give God some praise, everyone. Altar call. Time for prayer so we could go home. Time for prayer so we could go home. Whoever needs prayer, come up front, please. Prayer time. On our list is churches in Jonesboro, hospitals in Jonesboro, KLEK, Future for Felons, yep, form a circle, form a circle. Touch each other's hand. Family ties. Our own crystal is having surgery shortly. Kim Helper is Sister Ota's stepmom. She just lost her mom yesterday. Let's touch each other. Touch somebody. Pray for the one to your right. While I pray, pray for the one to your right. That God will meet them at the point of death. Heavenly Father, we are here one more time. Grateful to be in your service. And thank you, our Father, for making it possible to have a peaceful sanctuary to worship you in. Thank you for the ones you are bringing into our fold. We are grateful, Father, that you are God and you are God all by yourself. Father, I stand as the one you have sent. Stand in the gap for your children in this congregation. Stand in the gap for the city of Jonesboro. We stand in the gap for those that are on our minds and our hearts. We pray for the one that is standing next to us. Pray that you meet them at the point of their need. And you bless them as only you can. Father, as we depart from here, may we recognize the gifts you have put in us and the things you are ready to manifest through us in obedience. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. And it's in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. We call it down by faith. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Give God some praise and hug your neighbor as you go back to your seat. Thank you, Lord. Hug your neighbor as you go back to your seat.
Amen. Amen. All right, find, find someone. Brother Legenzi. Find your neighbor. Brother Legenzi, I can do this. Okay. Look your neighbor in the eye. Look him square in the eye. Look him square in the eye. Shirley. 